Today I'm here with Boneless and he's teaching me, a brand new terraforming Mars player, how to completely dominate at this game. He's put together an over 100 slide comprehensive approach to really doing well at this game. This is Legendary Tactics. All right, Boneless. So you, I can see, have poured a ton of time into this. So tell me about what, what we're looking at today. Yeah, um, today we're going to look at like a, I, I just came up with like a literal recipe for success. I think it was really useful to just look at what you need in the different part of the game, what you should focus on. So uh, today this is just going to be like a light, we're just going to touch on a lot of different things. And then in the bottom of the screen, there will be a little, a little text when it says where you can go to see more. Perfect. And you've got a link to your channel where you, you go into real detail on each of these. So um, do check out Boneless Dota's channel if you'd like to find out more about this. But today we're like, we're doing a, a wider snapshot. So what I really like about how you've structured this is that you've got your opening hand, which is the early game. You've got your early to mid game section and you've got your mid to late game section. And I think it's really important that the strategy changes over that time period. So uh, are you ready to begin? Sure. Okay, so let's start with uh, the opening hand. Yeah, basically the first thing, this is like a list of priority. So the first thing I'm looking for is just money income and card draw. So uh, before I look at any of the other stuff, I just want to see how can I get the biggest engine like here and now in my opening hand and I, can I get some card draw to cobble with this? And then also uh, once we have that, we can look, begin uh, looking at some of the other things. So for example, if you go to, yeah. Your default strategy is the engine strategy then. Just build out as much and as fast as possible. I mean, possible. it's your opening hand. It doesn't have to be. Even if you're going for the terraforming strategy, you still want to look at, do I have any mega critic production? Do I have any card draw? I mean, card draw is situational if you're going like for the fast game, but if it, it could still, we are talking about the opening hand, so it, nevertheless, it's still like good to notice if you have one of some of the stuff. That's right. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, so basically, uh, in the beginning, you will need the money income. So uh, on the on the top of the screen here, we have all the stuff that's like good for building your engine. And it's like like you're talking about. I'm I'm mostly enjoying greedy games. So definitely all of this stuff like titanium production, steel production, mega credit production, all of this stuff that really helps you build card, helps you buy cards during the game. Excellent. And then on the bottom of the, up on the bottom of the screen. <clears throat> Uh, it says, if it's in your interest to close the game, you can also build your engine with heat and TR. But like I said, even if, if, you, even if you're building your engine this way, you still need a little bit of money income to actually glue it together, if that makes sense. You can't just have Absolutely. only heat production and expect to win the game. You need a little bit of, of income. Yeah, regardless of your strategy, money's got to be there. Tell me, which uh, expansions are we talking about here? Is this just the base game or are we also referring to colonies? I think all of these uh, tips here, uh, they're, they're good no matter how many expansions you play with. But basically, for the most part, we are also talking about Prelude. We're also talking about Colony. So all expansions except for Turmoil, I would say. But these are more like general ideas of things you should look for. So even if you don't have all the expansions, this will still be useful. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, so we're moving into card draw now. And there are three cards that you're suggesting we always keep, almost. Yes. Um, the only exception would be, actually we're going to get to the exceptions in just a second, but yeah, before we get to that, these three are just stellar card draw cards, I think. And the, the reason these are so good is because these are like effects, so when something happens, you get a card. And these are just a little bit superior compared to just a flat, flat card that just gives you a card once per generation, like as, as an action card. Okay, so you see these, take them. That's Mars University Olympus Conference and Spin-Off Department. Now, there are some other cards that you should keep most of the time? Yeah, I, I mean, card draw cards in general. Um, if you're going for the greedy card strategy, or just if you're going for the long game, really, then you definitely take all the card draw you can get. If you are going for, like, all-in on cities or all-in on on the terraforming strategy, then, you, then you're not keeping that many draw cards. But even then, these three are just so good that even then I would still consider to keep these. But it's not a given that you keep card draw if you're going all in on terraforming, for example. Perfect. Okay. Well, uh, when would you not keep card draw cards then? Yes, uh, there are a few examples. Like in the late game, some card draw cards, they are simply just too expensive if they only draw you like one or two cards. So for example, we have uh, this card here in Vincer's Guild. It's, uh, it's, it's not one of the better cards. It's so, sort of one of the weaker cards because it's very expensive for what it gives you. But if you're playing the greedy game and you get this in the beginning of the game, you're of course still very happy. 
But let's say we are in the second to last generation, or even the last generation, then you would not really take this card. Exactly. Uh, because w what is it giving you? It's like it costs you nine for three foot card plus three for the actual card that you're buying with the card. So for 15 mega credits, you only get one card if you play this in the last iteration. So that's usually not worth it. Okay, that makes sense. Any other thoughts on card draw here? Yeah, if you have a lot of, if you have plenty of good cards in your hand already, maybe you don't need more cards. But then we again back to like if your hand is just stacked with with really good cards then it makes sense you wouldn't really have to invest in getting even more cards if you're just happy with playing the stuff you already have in your hand and number three ironically if you're um uh, if you if, if, yeah and number three ironically if your engine is bad it is sometimes hard to keep card draw card as this is just a luxury you cannot afford right now so we are back to this. I, I mentioned in one of my episodes that you need a balance of both to make this work. You need a balance of both money income and card draw. If you have like a million card draw, but you have no money income, it's not good. But if you have, mm. on the other hand, if you have a lot of money income, but you have no card draw, card draw then you're still going to struggle. Like so, everything uh, in life, balance is good. Yeah, especially when it comes to one income versus card draw. You need a balance of both to make it work. Right. And if you hit that sweet spot where you're just maximizing everything, then you go to God mode. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so if you're all in on cities or terraforming, what are we looking at here? Yes. Uh, so, so this is a starting hand I have, for example. So in this case, my hand is just stacked with city synergy. You you might not see it immediately, but we have mm. the ecology experts prelude plus kelp farming. So this alone is four plant production. Then we got even more plant plant production in the hand, and we got Tharsis. We got the early settlement that I'm choosing to keep, even though this prelude is kind of bad, but in this case, it's okay. So in this case, I wouldn't keep development center for, for two reasons. First of all, I don't really have energies to support it. Like if I went for power generation, it could be okay. But the thing is, if you're just all in on terraforming, or in this, in this case, if you're all in on cities, because this hand is so good when it comes to cities, then it's like, you're just so focused on doing this one thing that you don't really need to actually get any more card draw, if that makes sense. You're mm -hmm. already like like awesome in this direction, so there's no need to, no to get more card draw to go with it. Yeah. You don't need to double up. That's yeah, right. I mean, you could, but but in, in a lot of cases, it's just, uh, uh, it's just not worth it. In this case, for example, I wouldn't keep this development center. Mm -hmm. Good, let's move now to the synergy and you're going to focus on the colony synergy here. Yes, so what I'm looking for especially, so yeah, this is only if you play with colonies, obviously, but if you are playing with colonies, I just look for a little bit of colony synergy because it's very strong. So here are the colonies, and like as a rule, to begin the game, it's very good if you can get some of these Zerus, Luna, Triton, Pluto, just to get some resources, get some card draw. This is really what you're looking for in the opening hand. And then, of course, if you also need to, to get some energy production, you could go for Ope or Callisto. If you want to terraform, obviously Ganymede, Io. And then uh, if we go to the next slide, <clears throat> but but basically all of these cards here, uh, th this is like a lot of the, the synergy that I'm talking about. So for example, if you've got standard projects, then our standard technology, then all of a sudden just buying a colony is for 14 and that, that by itself is really good. That's right. And if we got a little bit more of this stuff, a little bit more of these cards here, then we already have a decent amount of colony synergy. And I think colonies are really good. So if you have just a little bit of this stuff, I think you should seriously consider building colonies. It really feels like you just need to take a measure of what you're being offered, find that synergy, and then start to stack or uh, amplify that one strategy. Yes, These are it's definitely about just finding, finding the best synergies in your hand. Are any of my cards playing well together? Stuff like this. Okay, so Especially we've got- Especially taking into account the cooperation. Yeah. Right. We got some uh, great cards most of the time. These are sort of general card, general use cards, and then situational cards. Yeah, it's a. Uh, <clears throat> um, usually, it's like this, but it's 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 not like a given, you know. But uh, I would say that all the cards to the right, usually, I'm very happy when I see those. But but the two cards to the left, those are very situational. Those are more like for the mid to late game, to be honest. Right. Okay. Very good. And we'll move on to discounts now. Yes, so uh, discount is definitely also something you want to look at. Like uh, I'm, I'm, I'm often talking about that you need money income, you need card draw, especially if you want to go the greedy game. But actually, what you need more than most is card discount plus card draw. This is actually mm. way better than mega credit production. Right. If you can stack this a little bit and you can have a lot of card draw and a lot of card discount, this is very, very good. 
yeah, if you don't need money to buy these or you need a less money, then that's much more effective. So let's take a look more at card draw and card discount here then. Yeah, so for example, like what I'm talking about, uh, this is the Theorycraft hand I made, and it's just to emphasize like like all the discount you can get and all the card draw you can get, this is like, it, it's so amazingly strong, so uh, yeah. Nice. All right, let's turn our attention to heat production. How much is heat production worth to you in the early game? Yeah, I would say heat production in the early game is generally worth five mega credits, but this is like only from a, a strict like engine building and VP point of view. Like, but the thing about heat production, the most important thing is that it's kind of bad unless it's in your interest to actually close the game. If you want to close right. the game, then it's immediately better. So it's up to eight mega credits or something. It's hard to say, but but yeah. Okay. Heat production by itself is kind of underwhelming, yeah. But yep. if you want to close the game, heat production, and especially with a, with a heat, heat combo, then it's really good. Very nice. Okay. And heat's okay <clears> if you <throat> do have a combo, though. Yeah, heat is good if you have a combo. So this is what I'm talking about in the early game when I'm looking for heat synergy. Some of this stuff would be really good. For example, if you have... Uh, the other day I just had a game where I had a bunch of heat production and then I randomly picked up insulation. And mm. that's perfect because now I can just pump up the heat as, as much as I want. And then I have this insurance, if that makes sense, to just go for insulation when the heat is like max. Right, okay. You can also do it differently. If you want to play more greedy, you can just make a bunch of heat production and use insulation immediately. Very nice. But, uh, so you get more control over your mega credit production then? Yeah, heat production, it just gets a lot better if you have a little bit of synergy to go with it. That's really what I'm trying to say here. Okay. And we've got a formula here. Yeah, so uh, what I was talking about, like, if you have exactly eight heat production, then you could kind of say that it's like it worth one, it's, it's like one TR per generation. Mm -hmm. And if we set one TR to be eight, which I do, then it's basically eight mega credit production. So when you look at it this way, this way it's actually kind of good. Um, so, but, but this, of course, then we also have to take into account, then you need to have a plan B for when the heat is maxed, because otherwise this math just falls apart. So oh, if you right. have like Helion or Insulation or Caretaker contract or something, or if heat is the last parameter to close, well, then we can say this. Then we can say that one victory point per, per generation or one TR per generation, that's exactly eight mega credit production. So gotcha. it gets a little bit better if you think about it this way. Yeah? Okay. And you've got another cool combo here. Yeah, so uh, like if we've got Extreme Cold Fungus together with either Regulate Eaters or GHD Producing Bacteria, this is also like one free TR per generation. So that's also like eight mega credit production if oh, you want wow. to look at it that way. So yeah, that's also good. Very nice. Okay, and we're moving on to number three. Are my cards supporting a strategy now? So what strategies are we talking about? Yeah, um, basically these are the strategies I'm covering on my channel, but mm -hmm. the, um, basically the most important ones would be the Filthy Dirty Terraformer, or just the Terraforming strategy, if you want to call it that, <laughs> uh, the Greedy Card strategy, <clears throat> and also the uh, City strategy. These are like, I want to look for cards that actually support this. Mm -hmm. So for example, if I have a, a bunch of CD synergetic cards, if I'm Tharsis or something, then of course I'm looking for more cards to go with the card or the CD strategy. Or if I have a lot of engine, a lot of card draw, I might just go in this direction to go for greedy game. Or if I had like the game I was just talking about, if I just have a lot of heat production and stuff like this, well, maybe I go for the, for the, for the terraforming game. Huh? Yeah, this is like, uh, Jakob Fraxelius commented this the other day, that his, his go-to strategy is actually this mid-game strategy. So uh, I just wanted to include this as well, uh, because uh, it actually makes a lot of sense. So so what he does is actually, he, uh, he terraforms a fair amount, but he keeps a little bit of card draw, but not too much. And then he just wants to close the game exactly at the sweet spot before the greedy guys gonna beat him. But then he still has a lot of points to actually beat the other terraformers. So it's a, it's a risky road. You would have to be a genius like uh, Jakob Fuxilius to actually make this work, but it, it is a valid strategy. I think it, it makes sense, yeah. Okay, and these are your, your three main strategies you would focus on then? Yeah, we're still talking about the opening hand. So definitely the, the strategy two, three, four, the like, cards that support these strategies, this is definitely also what I'm looking for in my opening hand. Okay, very nice. And so, uh, as you can see, like the filthy, dirty terraforming, that's suited for the short game. The card strategy is suited for the long game. And then the city strategy is overall also, uh, it, it can always work, the, the city strategy. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. All right. So cards, uh, the dirty terraformer might like. Yes. 
Uh, it's just this stuff. Uh, it's uh, Normally I would say that if you have regular dealers or GHG producing bacteria, you would kind of need to have a card like the one, the combo we just showed before, um, the cold fungus to actually go with that, but uh, yeah. And, and you need a particular corporation to make these work? No, it's just these are just examples of uh, what you might want to look for if, if you're going for the terraforming strategy. Umni is like the uh, the, the corporation that most people are like uh, connecting with the terraforming strategy. Gotcha. Okay, very good. And you could terraform a lot based on your opening hand, or if you realize your opponent has a better engine, you can start terraforming to close the game. We've been yeah through exactly that, that strategy. <clears throat> so yeah. And so we've talked about this as well. The terraforming strategy is better in the bigger games, four or five player games, but in the shorter games, uh, you want to close the game out uh, a little quicker. Yes. So in two or three player games, the all-in terraforming strategy, it just almost never works. Oh, it doesn't but, work, I mean, right? So, yeah. Yeah, but but in the mid-game in, in the mid -game strategy, like, like, like I talked about before, that can still work in two player games. And also notably, uh, I'm just talking about the the strategy where you just right from the beginning just go all in on terraforming. This is what I'm talking about. That's right. It, it, it's entirely reasonable, even in a two player game, to see to see like in the middle of the game. All right, my opponent actually has more luck when it comes to engine and card draw. Maybe I should now start to close the game. That's entirely reasonable. That's so, right. I'm just talking about the opening hand. Do I want to go all in terraforming? You cannot do that in two or three player games. It's just not going to work. I'll link to our two videos. We've done one on each of these. Uh, your yes. two, two to three player game, you scored like 278. And in your four to five player game, it was a much smaller score because you closed out quickly. So I'll put the links to those there. So, Okay, so can we look at what defines a greedy card strategy then? Yes, uh, real quick. Uh, first of all, you need a lot of card draw cards. You need like a bigger hand size than you would normally have. It's not uncommon that you have 20 cards when you go for the greedy card strategy. And you also need a huge engine, a lot of money income, the slide we just saw. And also you don't want to terraform too much. Like if you actually yourself want to make sure that the game drags out, uh, you can just make, make an effort to not terraform too much. So what you want to do is identify the last parameter to close. And then you should be really careful before you terraform that. It's still worth it if you get like a bonus or something, but you, sh you should really be careful. If you want to go to a greedy late game, you should be careful to terraform. And then all of a sudden, uh, also we, we want card discount. And uh, like I talked about before, card discount plus card draw, that is really powerful, especially for mm -hmm. these long greedy games. And then I'm also looking for resource amplifiers and victory point amplifiers. So yeah, this is really the stuff I'm looking for when I'm going for the greedy card strategy. Excellent. Okay, and some more strategies here. Uh, are we focusing in on the city strategy? Yeah. So the city strategy, and 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 this is still like the opening hand. So in the in the city strategy, I, I'm I'm just looking for cards that support the city strategy. You know, there's a lot of city synergetic cards. Okay. So what kind of synergies are we looking at then? Yeah, definitely just stuff that makes your, your city be cheaper or, best of all, if you could get Immigrant City, Martian Rails or Tharsis, that's really good to begin with because this will actually increase your mega credit production when you play cities in the early game. Right. But other than that, we can have there's a ton. But but <laughs> but if you want to build your engine with cities, you kind of need this. But otherwise, you can just, uh, if you have city cards, instead of just using the standard project, that's a lot better. But then, like for example, if you have pits and your Tharsis, you just slam down pets and you don't have to go for cities right away but along the during the game you just build a lot of cities and uh, the pets is gonna absolutely make some points for you okay so let's move on to milestones and planning which ones we aim for yeah so <clears throat> also in my opening hand i don't think you should it should not be like a big part of your opening hand but you can like have this in the back of your head you should still like plan which milestones to go for <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So in the early game, you should definitely have milestones in mind and you should always aim to get one of the milestones that naturally is coming to you on your way. So milestones are less important in two or three player games, but they are more important for five player games. And the reason for this is like in two or three player games, it's uh, the scores are just so much higher. So the milestones are not that important. Mm -hmm. In four to five player games, the scores are going to be a lot lower. So the five victory point you can get from milestone can really make a difference. But uh, yeah, what I was saying before, you really, you you have to go for the milestone that naturally fits your game, that, that comes naturally to you. Because if you're like, all right, I'm playing on the base map, I'm going for Maya, and then you see you have photo space heaven, you have early settlement, all right, that's two cities, and then just build a standard project city to get the last one. 
yes, congratulations, you got the mayor, but then you also lost the game. So. <laughs> right, okay, so you tend towards getting the milestone that suits your build rather than building your build to focus on a milestone. Yeah, exactly. If it is a five-player game, you know, then it could be okay to just like like make a, a couple of suboptimal plays just to get a milestone, but generally speaking, I would much rather get the milestone that naturally fits my game. That's right, okay. So let's look at number five here. Can you afford to keep good cards for later? Yeah, exactly. So this is uh, the reason this is number five is like, this is exactly what I want to look at when I've looked at the four other things in my opening hand. And the reason for this is when I have an idea of what I want to do in the first generation, then I can actually calculate how much mega credits do I have left over? And can I actually afford to actually keep good cards for later? So it's something you might consider, but just remember it does come with a cost, like keeping the greedy mm. cards that you're not going to spend right now you can actually tank your your hand your economy a little bit to keep that in your opening hand but it is worth it sometimes for sure nice there's a so there are some benefits to it but there is a cost so uh, let's look at resource amplifiers yes exactly so we got for example resource amplifiers it could be some of this stuff like especially if we're still talking about the early game it makes sense that you would like keep some of these because some of these cards can actually help to build your engine even more so this is definitely cards i'm looking for in the opening hand Okay, and plant amplifiers. Yes, also I think plant production is really good, but generally speaking you want to, to get this in the in the early to mid game. So if I have a lot of good, if I have some good plant cards, uh, just could be these amplifiers, could also just be plant production cards in general. If I can get away with it without tanking my economy, I could also consider keeping some of these in my opening hand. Ooh, okay, so you were talking about the Jovian strategy, so what are the Jovian amplifiers? Yeah, the Jovian amplifiers, the Jovian is a set collection of this game. So we got these four cards that says you get one BP or, well, terraforming, uh, if you're a terraforming Ganymede. But basically you get one BP for each Jovian you have uh, played. So th these cards are a very good late game. Usually you play these in the last generation, mm. except fire mining industries, because that gives a lot of engine as well. So you could play that earlier. But if you're keeping these cards in your opening hand, then it's like uh, it's a card that you're creeping in your opening hand that you're not playing until the late game. So you have to be kind of sure that you really want to go for Jovians because otherwise it's not worth it. But that being said, Jovian amplifiers, if you're going for Jovians, it could be so strong that it might actually be worth keeping in your opening hand if you see these. Wow, okay, but you got to go all in. <laughs> yeah, if you're keeping Jovian amplifiers, you have to go for Jovian. There's, there's no way around it. It's kind of the same with these cards here. Mm -hmm. These are like the green tags, uh, VP cards, so to speak. You can compare these to the Jovian amplifiers a little bit if you're going for green tags. Once again, these are also more suited for the mid to late game strategy. Um, but, but these cards are just very powerful, so it wow. could be worth to keep in the early game as well. Yeah, 7 VP for the large convoy and Venusian animals. Yeah, uh, that, that's uh, it's not gonna be this like all the time. But if you think about it, it with the large convoy, if you have an animal card where the card animals are worth one victory point per animal, mm -hmm. and you get four animals, and there's two victory point on the card, and there's also water, so that's why it comes to seven. Oh wow! And the uh, Venusian animal, I just I just put like my my estimation on this, so mm -hmm. I think. It's not often that the Venus go to 18, but when it does, I always get a lot of value from the Venusian animals. But once again, only in the mid to late game, probably. Okay, so what if you're doing the science cards? Yeah, if I get some of these cards, obviously, I mean, you you, you know the feeling. You, you, you're seeing some of these cards and you maybe you don't quite can play it in the first generation, or maybe you don't, you're still needing like maybe one or two more science tags. But these cards are just so powerful that if you get some of these cards in your opening hand, and you have an idea, all right, I can probably fulfill the science requirement, then these cards are definitely also worth to keep in your opening hand. Absolutely, okay. So now we're moving on to the second portion of the video and that's the early to mid game. So uh, why don't we start with the resource amplifier? Yeah, we already looked at this actually, but uh, definitely this is the time where I would play this stuff. So, and it's, it's, it's uh, all of these cards by nature are very situational. So it's not always you're going to get good value from these. But that being said, if you can make this align with your game, it can be extremely powerful. So for example, if you have Cartel and you already have a lot of uh, Earth tags, it can be like a huge boost to your engine. The same with like satellites and lunar mining, like all of these cards here, if it makes sense for your game, if you have a lot of these tags played, then it can be very powerful for sure. 
Absolutely, and we've got some rules here. So if you have a resource amplifying card like insects, cartel, or satellites, you should maximize the value of the card by playing as many of the tags as possible before playing the amplifier. What, yes. are, your, what, are, what are we talking about there? Yeah, so for example, if you've got the cartel and you have a lot of earth tags in your hand, then it makes sense. You definitely want to play as many earth tags before you actually play the cartel. Okay, just to maximize the benefit there. Yeah, exactly. But uh, also remember that this is like production, so you have to be really careful here actually, because there's also this aspect of remember production is better the earlier you get it. Mm -hmm. So it's it's kind of a balancing act, if that makes sense. You kind of want to maximize the efficiency of your card, but there's also this thing that re like resource uh, production is just better the earlier you can get it down. So it's uh, yeah, you really have to think about it. Absolutely. And what's the steady, <clears throat> deadly combo you've got for us here? Yeah, it's like this is like a perfect example of of how you can like really go all in on just getting like a resource amplifier like for example medical lab is in the vanilla set so if you get medical lab you have a lot of building tags you get a strong medical lab and then you can just slam down robotic workforce to just double medical lab mm -hmm. it can be very powerful you can like generate a huge engine like this easy win all right yeah. all right so in early to mid game you you need to decide on a strategy and go for it so how or when do you do this yeah, so um, basically in your opening hand, like you can have an idea of what you're going for, but it's not until like a few generations in, you're kind of, you're going to look at what everyone else is doing, you're going to look what's synergizing in your hand. Maybe I picked up a lot of synergy since the opening hand. So this is the part of the game where you really have to put your mind, all right, what, what's my strategy actually going to be today? Right, you might want to actually mine for particular cards or... That type of thing. Yeah, so so you kind of have to go for like this is the last chance for you to just pinpoint yourself in, into a strategy and just commit to that basically. Okay, and you also need to decide short or long game here, I assume. Yeah, um, exactly. Like what's... if like the rule of thumb, if you're going for the greedy long game, if you got the cards and they got the greedy engine, you want to go for the long game. And on the other hand, if your opponent got the greedy cards and the greedy engine then you want to maybe close the game a bit sooner because the greedy player is always going to make the most points in the last few generations. So if you let it, let it drag out, that's definitely to the greedy guy's advantage. Okay. In the previous um, early phase, we looked at what milestones we wanted to eye up. Now we're talking about actually purchasing them. Yes. So in the early to mid game, this is where you buy milestones as well. And yeah. Uh, like we talked about milestones, they, I mean they're really good when, when everything is said and done. To get five victory points for eight mega credits, that's of course very good. So you should always aim to get one of these, and may, maybe more of these if you can get away with it. And like we mentioned, they are of course better in in five, uh, four, five player games. In five player games, it is actually just a race, straight up race to get to mm -hmm. the milestones as soon as possible. But. Uh, Okay, and so if your economy can handle it, this is number 10, uh, you should pick up the victory point amplifiers, but don't play them. Why is that? Yes. I mean, this is like in the same line as you could pick up good cards for later in your opening hand. This is like, it's a little bit less risky to actually pick them up now here in the early to mid game, because now you haven't griefed your opening hand so much by doing this. But like we mentioned, these Jovian amplifiers, for example, they can be very powerful in the late game. So I'm definitely looking to pick up some of these VP amplifiers at this point, especially in the mid game, but I'm not actually going to play them. Like, for example, with the Jovian amplifiers, you don't want to play until the last generation, except via mining industries. Okay. And uh, if we're looking at the green versus Jovian amplifiers? Yeah, this is also something, all of these cards here, basically, they're really good to pick up in the mid game. And if you if we're talking about like decomposers, ecological zone, herbivores, maybe you also play them in the mid game because mm -hmm. they can actually stack up a little bit. But but generally speaking, most of these cards should be played like in the late game. But but that doesn't mean you can't pick them up now. This is the part of the game where I would pick up these cards because they can be very powerful and give you a lot of points later. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what do you do with plant production? When when should you be doing this? Yeah, I would definitely get plant production in the mid game. I think mid game is like this. The sweet spot for when to get plant production. Uh, the thing is, at the very least, you need to build like a little bit of money income, a little bit of money engine before you can actually justify going for uh, plants. Uh, so I, I think mid game is a good time to go for plant production because basically plant production is not a way to build your engine. It's, it's really not. It's basically a way to get a lot of VP. So in the mid to late game, this is where you really want to benefit from having a lot of greeneries. So by this logic, I think it makes a lot of sense to build plant production in the mid game 
or in the early to mid game, but at the very least after you have some money income going. Okay. This is a fun little graphic. Plants are mainly victory points, so we should think about them that way. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, this is what I was saying. Like, uh, If you think about it, it's really hard to get a plant down in the early game. And even if you do it, it's only one TR, and one TR is like mm -hmm. one mega credit production. So for engine building purposes, plants and greeneries is not, not good for building your engine. So I think it's very good to just get plant production in the early to mid game, especially in the mid game. And then you can benefit from uh, getting a lot of greeneries down and getting a lot of EP in the mid to late game with plants. Okay. And what are we looking at here with plant amplifiers? Yeah, once again, the plant amplifiers uh, are, of course, really good if you want to go for plant production. These are definitely cards I'm happy to see. All of these cards are very good. It's not often I get a, a nice uh, worms down because mm -hmm. it's not often uh, this card actually is worth it, but all the other cards here are just still are they're very good if you're going for plant production. Okay, and you also should play the late game plant cards too? Yeah, I just wanted to mention that even though I say that plant production should be played in the mid game, maybe even early to mid game, of course, if you see some of these late game plant cards, they, you of course still want to play these because these are very good. The, the thing is, it's kind of balanced in a way. So even though that they, you need six water, you need like a lot of uh, heat uh, temperature to actually play some of these cards. They're just so aggressively started that it's still worth to play it later on. So these are actually very good cards. You should definitely look for these cards in the mid to late game. Okay, we'll keep the eyes open for them. So now we're looking at the floater synergy. Yeah, so uh, floaters is definitely a thing I want to look at also in the mid to late game because this is where we are now in the game. So, uh, and the thing is, I think floaters is synergy and can generate a lot of VP. And uh, this is why I think it makes a lot of sense to play these in the mid to late game. Okay, so and, there's a uh, few exceptions though. Yeah. There's a few exceptions that are better for the early game, but uh, generally speaking, <laughs> I actually pointed them out here. So, like, if we're talking about uh, aerial mappers, dirigibles, I have no idea how to pronounce this, Titan shuttles, Titan floating air pad, local shading, apple collectors, some of these cards are really good in the early game. It's a bit awkward to pay Titan shuttles in the early game, but just because it's so expensive, but at the end of the day, it is titanium production, so it could make sense. And you might be thinking Atmo Collectors and uh, stuff like this. Well, why is this really good? But the thing is, uh, this, is a, uh, this is a Colonies card. So if you're playing with mm. Colonies, you also uh, need to get three energy production. So this card, Atmo Collectors, is actually very good to play in the first generation at the start of the game because you, you just automatically get three energy production because you can make one floater into three energy. Okay, wow. Tell me, what are, what are the five things you can do with the floaters? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I just boiled it down to five things that I thought is really good with floaters. So first of all, if you go for floaters, you really should look for Jovian Lanterns and Floating Haps, because these are the two floater cards in the game where the floaters are worth two uh, or one victory point for two floaters. So, so, and there's so many cards in this game that I can actually put floaters onto another card. So this is why I think these cards are really good. Also, you can look for combo. So some of the combos, for example, we got Stratopolis and Forced. Pre precipitation? Precipitation, <laughs> yeah. Precipitation, yeah. Nice. I have no idea how to pronounce this card. It's, yeah, I'm, That's okay. I'm you're here to help me. <laughs> English is your second language, so you help yeah. me with strategy and I'll help you with the English. It's great. <laughs> All right, that's a deal. <laughs> but yeah, if you look for some of these uh, combos, also this is a really good one. Hydrogen to Venus and floating halves. This is something you really want to play in the late game. Because if you think about it, Hydrogen to Venus is like uh, just a half of a Jovian amplifier especially if you use it in conjunction with floating halves. So if you could get these two cards together, it can be really strong in the late game. It can generate a lot of floaters to your floating halves card. Awesome. And number three, you aim to get Hover Lord and Venue File. What is this? Yes. Oh, the, oh, the milestone and the award. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So if you are playing with floaters in generally speaking, then it makes a lot of sense that you go for these two because it just goes hand in hand. Yeah, it does. Number four. You're aiming for a card with a Venus requirement, like Venusian yeah, so animals. Yeah, exactly. Venusian animals is the big, <laughs> is the big one I'm talking about. But the, all the other, there are a few others that are like Venusian insects and a few others. But basically, all of these cards are not the impactful one. This is definitely the most impactful one. If you can ever manage to get Venus to 18 and play Venusian animals, and you still have time to play a lot of science tags, the value can get quite insane. I've had games where this card just gave me 
more than 20 victory points. It's, it can get quite nuts. Oh, wow. And the fifth time, the fifth uh, way you can use floaters. Yeah, uh, yeah. the fifth way you can use floaters is just by playing them by themselves. Like, it's not, you don't have to go for a combo. I just wanted to mention that a lot of these floaters are actually quite good by themselves, just the cards. Hmm. You don't, like, you don't really have to to have a lot of combos to actually justify going for floaters. A lot of these cards are just solid by themselves. Okay. Very nice. Okay, moving on to the green tag synergy. Yeah. So uh, the green tag synergy, that's actually where you just... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't want to terraform too much, but you just want to collect box. That's really what it's about. So uh, this is also some stuff you want to look at in the mid to late game. And once we're talking about the green tech synergies, of course, I just have to give an honorable mention to meat industries because as soon as we have floaters or animals of any kind, these three cards here, those are just very, very good. Yeah, man, I have to give an honorable nod to the pun meeting the demands for high protein <laughs> foods. That's terrible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> All right, so we've got a deadly combo here. Ants, yeah. Venusian insects, and yeah. uh, these two cards, uh, Extreme Cold Fungus and Bacto Viral Research. Yeah, exactly. In the mid to late game, these are the combos you want to be looking for because these combos can give you like, what is it? Like, depending what card we're, card we're talking about, we're talking about Extreme Cold Fungus. It's like one point every generation. Plus, right. you can also use the card by itself, so it's like one and a half point per generation. So, so this, this can be very good in the mid to late game, for sure. This is why card draw, you told me in our strategy video that card draw is really important to you. And now I see why, because you're looking for particular combos to, to put together. So just increasing yeah, exactly. your odds of, of hitting those. So. Very yeah, good. definitely. And Large combo in fish. Yeah, yeah, that's another very good combo. So, so it's like it makes sense, right? Because we are talking about the mid to late game, and green tax, green tax synergy in general. That's also really good when we go, when we are like playing the long game, playing one of the greedy, the mid game strategy or the greedy card strategy. So, uh, when you have a lot of card draw and a lot of engine, you can pick a lot of these city synergy. Uh, uh, what's it called like green synergy cards uh we could mm -hmm. call it so you can generate a lot of points by doing this so this is definitely stuff i'm looking for in the mid to late game for sure okay yeah here's an example uh, this is actually the game we covered on your channel um, this is nice. an example of uh, just how many points you can actually get from green text yes like green text synergy can get quite insane so it's definitely uh, a thing you should look for in my opinion it's, it's just as good as jovian amplifiers maybe even better but oh very nice it's hard to say Okay, moving on to the awards section. Yes, so the awards are kind of weird. Uh, generally, I think it's really dangerous to start these too early, but the thing is they, they start cheap, right? The first award only costs eight and then it goes to 14 and then 20. Mm. But I think the first one, you could justify to do that in the early to mid game, but then you have to be very sure that you're actually winning this award because even then it's not worth it. Like you're spending eight, but if you're not winning that award or if you're not even getting second in that award, that's just money out the window. Mm. And uh, when it comes to the mid game and the uh, late game, I think this is the part where you should look at the one that costs 14 and the one that costs 20. So like even even in the last generation, I might not even like even consider the last award before the last generation. It kind of depends on the game, of course, but but uh, I, I just wanted to to make the point that it's not like it's not that important uh, to, to get these as soon as possible because it can be really dangerous if your opponents are actually taking them. Okay. Yeah, that, that makes sense. So um, back to Jovian Amplifiers now. Yes, so uh, we are in the late game. Now we are probably maybe even the last generation. So this is the point of the game where I definitely just want to play my Jovian Amplifiers and stuff like this. <clears throat> so all of these you want to play in, yeah. Let's shift now to uh, the sort of late, mid to late game. What are we looking at here with advanced ecosystems? Yes, so uh, this is the last uh, point of the menu. So uh, now we're talking about the last generation. And it's very important that you actually like spend these cards, uh, use them in the last generation, the cards that only give VP. If they give nothing else except for VP, you should play them in the last generation. Uh, it's, just, it's just the most efficient way to do it. Excellent. So that covers the opening hand, the early to mid game, and the mid to late game when you're just slamming down those victory points. Hopefully all of our viewers out there get more victories after watching your video. And just a reminder, they can go check out your channel if they'd like to see more of this. So thank you so much for joining us today, Boneless. We appreciate your expertise. Yeah, thanks for having me. Get out there, get gaming, be legendary. Thanks so much for your time.